Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood, and once again we're on the banks of the Trent, but this time we're on the eastern bank. The last four episodes you saw in this series were all on the western bank. Well, now we've crossed over Dunham Bridge, and we've come just to the south of where Newark and Sherwood touches West Lindsay at Newton-on-Trent. This is the very delightful North Clifton. North Clifton is a village and civil parish about 12 miles north of Newark-on-Trent in the Newark and Sherwood district in the county of Nottinghamshire. In 2011, the parish had a population of 216. This one touches Thorny, Newton-on-Trent and South Clifton on the eastern bank of the River Trent and Fledborough and Ragnall, both in Bassetlaw, on the western side of the Trent. The river defines its western border. Ironically, its sighting near the riverbank can be a bad thing. It's liable to be flooded after heavy rain, but there is a considerable floodplain between the river and the nearest houses. It is and always will be associated with its much bigger neighbour, South Clifton, and the two villages share many of the amenities, like the school and the church. The name Clifton means cliff farm or settlement. Both North and South Clifton were recorded in the Doomsday Book under three names, Clifftone, Clifftune and Cliston. Alternative names for North Clifton include the singular Clifton and also Clifton North. The parish was in the North Division of the ancient Newark Wapentake in the Eastern Division of the county. North Clifton Parish once included the townships of South Clifton, Harvey and Spalford, which all became separate parishes in 1866. White's Directory of Nottinghamshire of 1853 records that the four localities anciently formed four manors of the Bishop of Lincoln's Fee and one of Roger de Busley's. They would eventually pass to the local families, the Lovetots, Piggotts and Willoughby's. The name Clifton is not inaccurate either. The settlement is sited near a long cliff and numerous fragments of urns, bones and scalps have been found near a spot which was anciently occupied by a fort. In Saxon times, that fort, where an extensive view could be obtained of the surrounding countryside, guarded the passages of the Trent. The fort on the cliff, as it was known, would consequently be of some local importance. King John, Henry III and the first three Edwards frequently visited these parts and Edward I founded a college for secular priests here in North Clifton. There's no fort in North Clifton anymore, in fact, Fledborough Viaduct, which you can get a great view of from here, is pretty much the only thing now that overlooks the Trent. A hundred years ago, Clifton was a busy, flourishing place, partly owing to the river traffic, which was then considerable. Just east of the village is North Clifton Hall, that stands within a park, and in 1881 was the seat of George Freeth. There's a row of houses called Freeth Terrace on Silver Street, Speaking of the 1800s, at that time most of the parish residents were farmers, and it's almost the same here today in fact. The parish traditionally held a feast every year on September the 12th. North Clifton used to have a free school which was built in 1799, and there was also a Wesleyan chapel in the 1800s. Demographically, this is a parish whose population density comes in at 39.39. 98.1% of its residents are white British. There's one Asian resident, and we'll talk about him shortly. The population has actually decreased dramatically by some 2.3% in the last 10 years. Those that are still here love to call this peaceful corner of Nottinghamshire home. It's a very proud village and very well kept. The average house here will cost you £229,000. North Clifton doesn't have much in the way of amenities. It does, however, have a bus service. The number you need here is the 367, which runs between Newark and Harby. 
Most local children attend Tuxford Academy, and as such, there's also another bus service, the 609B, which calls through the village on the way to the school. Now, how about this for an unusual feature? North Clifton has a meditation centre and Japanese garden right in the heart of the village. Named Pure Land, this has won many awards. It was the brainchild of Maitreya Koji Takushi, who was born and brought up in Handa, Japan, near Nagoya. It was whilst staying in Tevisal he came across a property for sale in North Clifton, which became a base from which to teach meditation. Pure Land was born in 1973. Maitreya's main aim in creating the garden was to provide a peaceful, beautiful area which guests and visitors to the centre could enjoy. So in 1980 he began the process of transforming two acres of flat field and wilderness into a Japanese garden. Now it's quite early in the morning here in North Clifton uh, and for that reason the garden here, the Japanese garden, isn't open yet. It opens at 10 o'clock. Uh, so I won't be able to go in and have a look around, but that's what the picture bit's for. I'll find some images of the things that are inside this Japanese meditation garden and show you exactly what's in there. Many plants in the garden were given by friends and villagers and local farmers helped with the task of ferrying stones. The small pagoda was built using scrap materials found in outbuildings. There's a Zen garden which consists of rocks and chipped marble, and it also has the world's first, or so it's believed, glittering crystal garden. As it transpired, it wouldn't have been open anyway had the time of day been right. It's open Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays and bank holidays from March the 25th. Admission costs £7. The only other thing in the main area of the village is a phone box, and this one houses a defib machine. We're yet to see the school and the church though, as they are a short drive away. Of course, North Clifton is right on the eastern bank of the River Trent. We've seen the river countless times on the channel before, so I opted not to walk to it. We will, though, get a look at it in South Clifton. There's a couple of nice landmarks in the centre of the village. These include a pump, which has a plaque on it saying John Pumphrey, 1938 to 2007. There's also a tree that was planted here to commemorate the Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 2012, sited behind the bus shelter. So as you've probably gathered by now, North Clifton is a very small village. It's just basically what I've shown you thus far. Although there is a little bit more we need to cover. And to do that, we need to head this way. Because down there is where we're going to find the church and hopefully some nice views of Fledborough Viaduct. Now, Fledborough was a long time ago, and I may be repeating myself here with some information on the viaduct. It carried the double track LD and ECR's Chesterfield Marketplace to Lincoln Central Main Line over the River Trent. Traffic continued to run over the viaduct until the 21st of February 1980, when a goods train derailed at Clifton, and that damaged the track. Reinstatement was deemed uneconomic, and the line from Piewipe Junction over the viaduct as far as High Marnham was closed and ultimately lifted. That brings some memories back from the Bassett Law series. If you've not seen my Fledborough video in the Bassett Law series, I borrowed Hannah's bike to cycle from Fledborough to the viaduct. And I was literally just at the other end of it, on the other side of the Trent, where I decided to stop and then go back. I found some interesting stuff there, like the old Fledborough railway station and some old signals uh, which are along the former railway line. If you've not seen it, it's one of the videos I will link in today's end card. The Cliftons were served by Clifton-on-Trent railway station which opened in 1897. It closed to passengers in 1955 and entirely in 1964. The trail the line now forms is the same one that I rode along using Hannah's bike back in Fledborough. It's named the Skellingthorpe Walk. St George the Martyr dates from the 13th century, although there are records which suggest that there was an earlier church prior to the conquest. The church stands on a spur of higher land overlooking the floodplain of the River Trent. It's situated on the west side of Church Lane, which links the two villages of North and South Clifton. Apart from minor alterations in the 15th, 16th and 17th centuries, there was little evidence of any major changes until the 19th century. The church was listed by English Heritage as Grade 2 in January 1967. 
The distinctive entrance to the church grounds is through a lit gate attached to a dwarf brick wall with wrought iron railings. Round these gates on one side is written, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and on the reverse, I am the resurrection and the life. These were also listed by English Heritage in October 1984. You can see the Trent from the church. The father of the author Charles Kingsley was vicar here from 1821 to 1832, and the Trent could have been the inspiration for the novel The Water Babies. From the churchyard you do get some of the best views of Fledborough Viaduct. I stood at the far end to capture as much of the viaduct as I could. And here in the churchyard at North Clifton is where I've chosen to introduce today's picture bit. Here it comes right now. Now, of course, this is the first of the Clifton Twins. This is North Clifton, and just to the south is South Clifton. Right on the border between the two, you'll find that building behind me. That is North Clifton Primary School, but of course it serves both Clifton villages. And speaking of South Clifton, that's where I'm heading to right now to make my next episode here in Newark and Sherwood. I do hope you've enjoyed this one, though. This has been the Parish of North Clifton, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.